So now we investigate the boundary. So the region was y equals x, x equals 0, y equals 3. And I'm going to look at the function on each of these pieces. So this piece right here corresponds to x equals 0. So I'm going to look at the function f of 0 comma y, and y goes from 0 to 3, because that exactly describes all of the points from here to here. x is always 0, and the y values go from 0 to 3. But in this specific example, if I plug 0 and y into the function that I've got, I'll get y squared minus 4y is the function. And now all we're doing is a one-variable calculus problem. We want to find the absolute max and min of this function on the interval from 0 to 3. So this is just a parabola, and we can take the derivative of this and set it equal to 0. And this is 0 when y is 2. And that's the only critical point of this one variable function. We can we could investigate whether it's a local max or min or that that sort of thing, but we can also just plug it into the function because any absolute max or min that occurs along here, except for the endpoints, would have to occur at the point zero, comma two. So I'll just plug that into the function to keep track of its value. And referring back to the function, I'll get 2 squared minus 8, so I get negative 4. And it's also good to plug in the endpoints because just looking at this piece here and trying to find the absolute max and min on here, we know um, if it occurs inside, it's at 0, comma 2, but it could also occur at endpoints, and so we can just plug those in. So I have f of 0, 0 is 0, and f of 0, 3 is 9 minus 12, which is negative 3. So here are the values we have to keep track of. We already had negative 5 from before, negative 4, 0, and negative 3. Now we have two more boundary pieces to investigate, this part and this part. So the one part was... Um, this line y equals 3, I'm going to plug 3 in for y, and the x values go from 0 to 3. And I want to find the absolute maximum and minimum values of this one variable function as x goes from 0 to 3. And referring back to the original function, plugging x and 3 into it, you end up with x squared plus 3 squared minus 2x minus 12. So you get x squared minus 2x minus 3. And so we maximize this one variable function on that interval. I'll have 2x minus 2 is the derivative of this, and I set it equal to 0. x has to be 1 if I'm at a local max or min. So when x is 1 and y is 3, the function has the value um, negative 4. So that's one thing we keep track of. And we've already plugged in this endpoint. Now I should probably plug in this one, which is 3 comma 3. There the function is equal to 0. So just recall the list we have so far. We found negative 5 on the inside was a value. We found a negative 4, and we found a 0. So, so far, the smallest value we find is negative 5, and the largest value was 0. And the last piece to check is the line y equals x. So I'm looking at f of x comma x because that's the line um, y equals x. 
and x is allowed to go from 0 to 3. If you plug this into the original function, plug x in for x and x in for y, you end up with 2x squared minus 6x. And we maximize this on the interval. So we, we take the derivative of this. We get 4x minus 6. Set that equal to 0. And we see that um, a critical point of this one variable function, which corresponds to the values of this function on the line, would have to be x equals 3 halves. So we plug this into f. And you can check this for yourself that you get negative 4.5. So in the end, we have this list of values that we came up with. We had a critical point on the inside. We checked all the boundary pieces for critical points and plugged in the endpoints. And the smallest value was negative 5, and it occurred at the point 1, 2. And the largest value was 0, and this occurred at the origin, 0, 0, and at 3, 3. So negative 5 is the absolute minimum. And 0 is the absolute maximum of the function I started with on this triangular shape. And I'll stop there.